which is a competitive programming game. Um, so yeah, thanks for being here. <laughs> this, this is a hard problem. You've you've arrived at the at the worst possible time because I'm I'm struggling to solve this problem, but we'll get it. We have four minutes left. Um, so if you give me four minutes, I will solve this problem, and then I'll I'll say hey or say say hey to everybody. <laughs> All right, so um, we grab the last character. If that last character is not an actual <laughs> welcome raiders, welcome raiders. <laughs> If that last character is not a letter, oh, I need to make this case insensitive. That's why. Okay. Um, oh, and then we, ah, this, this gets tricky because then I lose the spaces after the punctuation. Oh man, this is hard. I have three minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome Raiders. I appreciate you being here. Um, and, and hopefully, hopefully, um, I will, um, um, my internet will not go down. <laughs> so, last time we got raided by Kit Boga, I think I was live for probably like 30 minutes or so, and then my, my chat just, uh, not my chat, my, my internet broke. Um, <laughs> Madhouse Steve, thank you for that raid. And thanks for all the follows, everyone. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, okay. Um, okay, so, um, at this point, I have completely broken it. We only have three minutes left, and actually, I think I kind of like what Doc su suggested. Um, <laughs> we have to look at it character by character. There's like this really weird case though, where if there's a space, then we have to, um, yeah, if there's a space after the question mark, <laughs> reload if your video is broken. Yeah, I I'm live. I'm live. I'm still here. Thank you everyone for being here. Like I mentioned, if you give me just uh, two minutes, I will fail this coding challenge and then and then we'll say hey to everyone. Uh, word equals word plus space. Well, not quite though, because it just, it only happens here. Oh, if there's punctuation, oh, punctuation plus space, huh? Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll do that plus a space. No? Yes. Oh, no, 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 not that. <laughs> um, so if it's not a character, then we'll say uh, punk equals punk plus a space. And this is actually uh, a punctuation. <laughs> what? Oh, 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 and then I just need to trim it. Okay, we're gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna, with this horrible, horrible logic and thousands of people watching me, I'm gonna solve this problem. Um, yes, yes, look at this. Look at this. So, <laughs> here's the thing. Bef before, before all the Kip, welcome Kit Boga friends, but before you all got here, there were some people that were shaming me in the chat. They were like, this is, this is, uh, <laughs> this is painful to watch. <laughs> um, you're never gonna solve it. Why are you doing it this way? But look, we're just having fun. We're just having fun. <laughs> I solved it, so I'm going to submit it. Thank you. Thank you for the claps. <laughs> Thank you for all the follows as well. I appreciate you. Uh, cool. I'll share my code. So what we were just doing is this thing called um, uh, Clash of Code. Uh, gifted sub. Uh, if, maybe. <laughs> if anybody's out there gifting subs, Rocket Turner with the, the fix. And I, I appreciate you, Rocket Turner. Thank you for that fix. Um, Looks good to me. Push it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I submitted it. Yeah. So what we were just doing here is this game called Clash of Code where um, multiple people get to compete to solve the same programming problem. And um, you have arrived at the coding garden. <laughs> Typically, we solve challenges like this. We build applications. Um, we answer questions. Today is more of a, a more a more coding stream. <laughs> yeah, we're going to we're going to definitely do more clashes. And so for for those of you that just joined us from Kit Boga stream, how many people know how to code? How many people can like write Python or JavaScript or C++ or Java? Type one if you know how to code. <laughs> Thank you for all those follows. <laughs> um, none, none, one. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> well, there's, there's, it looks like there's quite a few. Cool. So um, I'll tell you this right now. Uh, whoa, the chat. My, my, here's what I need to do. My overlay, I need to disable animations when we have this many chats. Um, yeah, let me disable animations really quick. <laughs> it's and it's okay if you don't know how to code. Typically, we're we're pretty beginner friendly here, and I, I like to explain things um, if they go wrong. Uh, not if they go wrong. I don't know what's happening. What am I doing? 
chat. This. I need to disable animations because the chat's moving way too fast. <laughs> um, how about that? Cool. That's better. <laughs> Um, yeah, that should fix it. Cool. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. So go to this website, codinggame.com, and you can sign up. And then after you've, uh, you've signed up, um, we're going to play this clash game. So what will happen is I will start a clash. I'll, I'll put a link in the chat and it can be one of three different modes. Uh, we have the fastest mode. So who can be the fastest one to solve it? Um, the shortest mode, this, this animation is cooler. I like it. <laughs> How many challenges did I complete so far? Uh, we've only done uh, two. We did two. The first one involved algebra. So here's my beautiful mind sketch on how we solved the first one. It was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> this next one was... Um, uh, you, you had... To, oh, yeah. I totally forgot to explain what we actually did there. But you basically had a sentence of words. And you needed to... Uh, for every word that had an even number of characters, put a zero. And if it had an odd number of characters, put it one. And you had to replace the whole thing. Yeah, so if you go to a Coding Game, you can sign up. And then in a second, I'll put a link in the chat. And then we can all compete. So yeah, let's do shortest mode. That'll be fun. And they have a ton of different programming languages. So I like to do JavaScript. Um, but you can choose any one of these to solve the problem that, uh, that we've been given. Yeah, so these are the, these are the new filters. <laughs> um, cool. And so... Before we get started on that, um, I'm just going to look at the top three from this previous solution. So first of all, I'll, I'll show you my code. My code is messy. <laughs> I was just trying to get it done. <laughs> um, but basically, split the word on spaces. And then for each word, if it ends in punctuation, for, you, remove the punctuation so that way we can save it. And then look at the word length. It's, it's ridiculous. We're going to look at we're going to probably see some much more elegant solutions. Uh, yeah, we don't usually swear on here. We try to keep it family friendly. OK, struct says, oh, <laughs> look at this. So this is the regular. This is a regular. So you saw my code. This code is doing exactly the same thing in a much shorter fashion. Um, so replace all or one or more word with a function that looks at the length. And then from there, uh, replace every number followed by a space with the number itself. Huh. Very cool. All right. I gave up. <laughs> right, let's see how Alka did it. Um, looks very similar. So find a word, one or more words, followed by a space. And then we're going to replace that with the word that has no space on it. Find its length. So trim is going to remove the space. If it's an even length, one, otherwise zero. Great job, Alka. And what's up, Coach Joe? <laughs> Check out Coach Joe. He's a member of our Live Coders team. Oh, thank you, uh, DS. D DK Swan. Thank you for that. Um, but uh, speaking of live coders, uh, check out uh, twitch.tv slash team slash live coders. There are um, other people that are writing code live on Twitch, which is pretty cool. Uh, and Code Show is one of them. I mean, he's not live right now, but he does go live. <laughs> so check them out. <laughs> um, all right. Cool. Great work. All right. Let's see how SB Dean did it. So SB Dean uh, originally found me through Kit Boga. So SB Dean is, is Boga fan for sure. And they made it in the top three. So that's good to see. Um, they did it in Python. Um, split it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, shout out. So tomorrow, um, the Live Coders team is going to be on the front page of Twitch. Boga fam. Pecan heart. <laughs> um, they're going to be on the front page of Twitch for the Live Coders conference. So yeah. OK. So um, split the word. Oh, are they looking at it character by character? Yeah, I think SPD is looking at each individual character. This is great. <laughs> and thank you all for those follows. I appreciate you. Well, thank you, Javis. I appreciate that. OK, so look at each individual character. If it's not punctuation, um, then we are going to. Um, no, if it is punctuation, <laughs> we're going to put it on the end. Otherwise, we have the word itself. Uh, then we get the length of the word. Um, and then I actually, I honestly don't know what's happening here, but we need to move along. Like, we got to stay interesting. So we're, um, <laughs> we are going to uh, do another challenge and we're going to do it in shortest mode. So I'm going to post a link in the chat. Anybody that has an account on this website can join. 
and um, we don't know what the challenge is going to be yet, but whatever the challenge is, we need to solve it in the least number of characters. So our solutions are gonna get very hard to read, but let's go. Um, so this link is now in the chat. Yeah, up to 100 people can join. I, I don't know if 100 people will join. Let's see how fast this fills up. But, um, whoa, look at it. <laughs> um, but up to 100 people um, are going to um, be able to join us. And um, I think now is our chance to load test the Clash of Code site. I don't know if any if anyone has been able to fill up um, 100 slots. Help me fill up 100 slots. <laughs> uh, when am I going to do web dev? Um, I think after this challenge, I'm going to build a simple web app. So um, um, any anybody that's uh, here that doesn't know anything about coding, I'm going to try to build a very simple app and talk about the basics of coding. I think we'll do that after this clash. Because this is advanced stuff. <laughs> this is, um, you really have to know what you're doing to be able to do this. Yeah, I think Lisp is an option. Uh, but yeah, uh, Dark Angel is mentioning what that percent sign is. It's the, the modulus operator. So it's the remainder of the division. Um, so remainder of dividing, uh, and then you end up with a bit that can be used as a boolean. Yeah, so that's what was happening in Python. You either get zero, one, and then that's a that's a boolean. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Alex Craven. The best Twitcher. Oh, I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, you can do JavaScript, Python, C++, uh, Groovy, Java, C Sharp, all, all that good stuff. So 30 seconds left. Yeah, there's, there's the link. Thank you, Murdoch, for that. Click that link and you can join. Oh, look at all the people. <laughs> this is definitely the most people, the most people that have joined a clash. Yeah, I'm so lost. Coding is definitely an art I appreciate. I appreciate that. I appreciate your appreciation. Um, but yeah, um, also in, in my flurry to solve that problem and also being rated by thousands of people, we didn't shout out Kit Boga. Ripley with the gifted subs. Thank you so much, Ripley, with the five gifted subs. But shout out Kit Boga. Um, if you haven't heard of him, it's a really fun channel where he uh, calls scammers and pretends to be other people and um, basically just trolls the scammers. It's really, really fun to watch. 80 people. This might be one of the biggest clash of codes. <laughs> Thank you, Candy Cane. All right, so this is shortest mode. We have 15 minutes to solve the problem. Um, the problem description is on the left-hand side. I'll read that in just a second. And then on the right-hand side is where you write your code. But you can see your code size in the bottom right. And we want this number to be as small as possible. We want this to be super, super tiny. And the person with the smallest number wins. Um, programming is probably the only place where something like that happens. But uh, comments count. So you can see also that if I remove the comments, the number goes way down. Um, yeah, so you don't want comments. Um, if you're in JavaScript, you probably don't want semicolons because that's going to take up uh, space. And if you're in JavaScript, they have a helper method called print that you can use instead of console log. Um, OK, so that's the code part. Uh, down here, <laughs> you have your tests. So you can see your example inputs and outputs um, for writing the tests. And then let's figure out what this problem wants because we only have 13 minutes left. OK, given an array of size in, how many non-empty contiguous subsequences have a bitwise exclusive or equal to zero? <laughs> this is really hard. We'll, we'll try to break it down and uh, we'll try to break it down and figure it out. Um, but given an array, how many non-empty contiguous subsequences have a bitwise exclusive or equal to zero? Okay, so for example, uh, you're going to get an input that has the number five, which is the the length of the values, and then your second line of input. And thank you, David, for those bits. I appreciate you. Uh, your second line of input is going to be um, the numbers that you have to look at. That's your that's your sequence. Um, okay, so. And then the output is two, because one exclusive or with two exclusive or with three equals zero, and two exclusive or with three exclusive or four exclusive or with five equals zero. Um, but one, four, five is zero. Yeah, so it's only connected, contiguous. So. Basically, we need to look at all um, of the subsequences, continuous subsequences in here. So. We look at one and two, uh, then we look at one, two, and three, one, two, three, four, um, one, two, three, four, five. We look at two, three, four, uh, two, three. Then we look at three, four, five, three, four, and four, five. Yeah, it, this is tricky, but basically we have to look at all the subsequences of continuous sequences, and then for each of the values, we need to exclusive or them. Uh, and in JavaScript, um, there is um, 
an exclusive war operator we can use. All right. Well, thank you, the Razzle, Razzle Dazzler. Thanks for being here. Um, all right. Yeah, there we go. Alka has it. The hat. The, the uppercase thing is the bitwise or. Nice. I appreciate that one. Um, okay. I will, I will give it my best shot. Um, okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start shortening this thing. Um, I'm going to put read line in a variable called r. So that way it, it shortens it. Um, we'll call r once because that reads the number of items. Um, and character limit with 10 bits. Thank you for that. Oh, bitwise exclusive or, not a bitwise or. Yeah, sorry. Bitwise exclusive or, xor. Cool. Um, all right. Um, read in the first line of input, which is the number of items. Then um, read it in again, and that's the array. And then we can split that on spaces. Uh, well, not that. Split on spaces. So this is going to give us back our, our, our array of numbers. Um, and then we can do the exclusive or. Now, I'm curious. Uh, a bitwise or. No, no, no. Uh, bitwise are, are operations that happen on bits, like zeros and ones. This is all super complicated. I don't even know if we're going to figure it out. I'm going to try my best. I will say that in the real world, as a professional programmer, someone who gets paid to write code, I'd never have to do anything like this. Um, regardless, okay. Um, bitwise, yeah, bitwise is binary operations. So b between two items. Um, but let's let's see an example of this. If I say one exclusive or two, so that basically takes the bit of the binary representation, takes each bit of the binary representation of both of these numbers, and then does an exclusive or on each of the bits. And then the resulting value in this case would be um, one one, which is three. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we get that. But if we if we bit why if we exclusive war it with three, then now if we look at all the bits and we exclusive war, then we get zero. Okay. But my question is, does this work with strings too? And it does. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah. And thank you, Ripley. Thank you. Thank you for those uh, gifted subs. That happened, right? Yeah, that happened. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Fun fact, A exclusive or B exclusive or B equals A. Well, well, Mr. Doc, I don't know if I can use that. <laughs> um, OK, so that A is going to give us, it, give us the array of all the numbers. We then now need to find all subsequences, right? So we need to find, um, we need to calculate one, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So I think we really just need like a, a loop and then a nested loop. So I'll do, um, and then we also need a count. So we're counting up how many of these subsequences have an exclusive or that is um, zero. So our count will start off as zero. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Javis. Best CJ. <laughs> yeah, we have a ton of reward redemptions that we haven't done just yet. Um, We'll, we'll hydrate. So count is zero. I then need to iterate over um, A. So I'm just going to do for each. And that's going to give us the num. And actually, I'm going to do a map just because it's shorter. But technically, I don't need a new array anyways. Um, yeah, we've got, I mean, and there were more than that because I, I had to refresh my overlay. <laughs> thank you all for the follows. I appreciate you. And thank you again. Thank you, Kit Boga, for the raid. Um, OK. Hey, what's up, Larry? Check out Larry. He's another member of our Live Coders team. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to map over it. Uh, yeah, uh, we got raided by Kipoga. And thank you, David, for those bits. Uh, David, shout out to David. He's a mod here. He also streams. Um, okay, we have each individual digit. Um, now, we're going to take that digit and exclusive or it against uh, a, a, a nested subsequence. So I actually want a for loop that... Um, we might, I don't know if we'll do another clash, mainly because the, I know there are a lot of beginners here and I want to do some more beginner friendly stuff. And this, this is, this is complex. I don't know how fun it is to watch <laughs> like a super complex thing. <laughs> um, okay. So I need to iterate. Uh, so we're going to have each digit and each individual index. You don't need to do this. You can run through the array once and compute the XORs keeping a counter of them. Hmm. I think I get what you're saying. So like if you're basically saying if I 
exclusive or them one at a time any time that exclusive or is zero increment the counter is that what you're saying who was this who said this uh super duper shiny is that what you're saying <laughs> um uh we're gonna okay okay <laughs> it's probably shorter to do that okay let's see let's see for contiguous elements, yes. Okay, all right. If we if we get this because of super duper shiny, I need the chat to just go crazy because this is actually a lot easier. Because then we can just do, um, we'll say, uh, if array at i because we're we're gonna use a map so that way it goes over the array, but at the end of the array, uh, so if if array at i plus one, then we'll do the exclusive or. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, see you later, Dark Angel. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for being part of that raid. Um, all right, so if if we're not at the end of the array, then we want to exclusive or it with the... Oh, and, do, and, I, and I guess I need to keep track of the current um, exclusive or. Yeah, so we're going to check that we're not falling off. I mean, honestly, it might be better to do a for loop than a map because I can do um, a for loop that goes from i equal zero... Um, all the way up to uh, a dot length minus one. Yeah, so a dot length minus one is going to go uh, one before the end. Um, I plus plus. For index in the array, is that going to save us some space? But then we can't do this, Andrew. We can't. We can't make. We can't miss the last one. All right, I only have five minutes left, <laughs> and I've barely solved this problem. So I'm, I'm going to do my best. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna say x equals x exclusive or with a at i. All right. Um, and d does my x need to start off at zero? I don't know. I have no idea. And then we'll say if x is zero, then uh, count plus plus. All right. Then we print the count. <laughs> we got one. We expected two. Uh, should this? Oh, I need to, um, indexing is my choice. Um, okay. X exclusive ORD with the current value inside of the array, the current value in the array. <laughs> no worries, super deepy, super duper. Do spaces count? Uh, there aren't. Um, I already I already split it, so I basically took this and turned it into an array that just has the values one, two, three, four, five. I need to leave off prefixes too. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I need to set my conditions. I have several. Um. Okay. Exclusive or if the result of that exclusive or is zero, we increment the count. I mean, let's do this. Has anybody else finished it? Nobody else has finished it. Uh, the problem statement is we have to find the number of contiguous subsequences of this array where their values, all exclusive or together, equal um, a zero. Equal zero. Yeah, I'm lost too. Don't, no worries, Jubam. <laughs> um, oh, wow. If the current element is empty, check the XOR accumulation. Well, yeah, there are a lot of people here, for sure. My husband is a coder, and math makes my brain hurt. But this is somehow fascinating. Well, nice. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for sticking around. <laughs> continuous is a typo. It should be... Oh, continuous. Okay. Um, I got this. All right, all right. I got this. I think we have, what, three minutes? We have three minutes left. <laughs> you are XORing elements together in an accumulator. Yeah, so I'm doing... Oh, I, have to... I need to reset it. Yeah, so if it equals zero, then I need to reset it, right? Um, well, I don't know, because then it's zero again. <laughs> I'm only counting subsequence starting at the start of the input. Yeah. Oh, really? No. Yeah, because here, two, three, this includes two, three, four, five, which doesn't have one inside of it, right? Right? Um, contiguous is a word. Yeah, I have a... F okay, reset. Increment the counter plus one if zero... 
Yeah, I have my C. C is my counter. The the other issue. <laughs> start the loop at one, so it skips the first value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could start if we start the loop at one. We can initialize x to be uh, the array at one. I think that's what we need to do, because right now we're starting it off at zero. Um, array at zero, and then we'll start at one. We'll go one from the end. No, we go all the way to the end, right? Yeah, Larry's already figured it out. <laughs> I think I'm gonna. I'm going to. I think I might just bail out on this one because I was gonna do the. I was gonna do the nested looping thing, and I couldn't figure that out. I spent these trying to figure out that pixel can't. Oh yeah, yeah, this <laughs> is <It's just> pixel. <laughs> That's what it is. Here's here's a real one right here. Uh, we have an emote for that too. Um, oh, oh no, we need to look at the next one. Yeah, will this do it? Wait, wait, will this do it? No. All right, I've given up. This is this is too hard. <laughs> I give up. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna submit my current code. We'll we'll take a look. Let's see. No, like okay. It is technically shortest mode, so it's very possible that people are waiting the last few seconds to submit a solution that um, just X or I with X or I plus one. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Well, that only gives us zero. Nobody can submit? What? Submitting is... I think there's too many people in the clash. <laughs> Internal error. We've broken the Clash of Code website. Great work, everyone. Um... <laughs> no! That's, that's what I was going to do initially, Larry. And then I got talked into not doing it. Yeah. Well... <laughs> well... Um... Internal error, everyone. Great job. Great job. Uh, uh, Larry didn't get to compete. I think Larry came in a little bit late. He put his answer in the chat. Um, we tried our best. <laughs> we tried our best. <laughs> Do another one? Uh, I kind of want to... I want to... Uh, let's build an app. Um, we're going to build an app. The, 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 this was enough. I'm tired of struggling. The thing... Here's the thing. Programming is like 90% struggling and 10% actually getting things done. However... <laughs> however... For those of you new to coding, I, I just want to build an app. Let's just build an app. We're going to build a weather app. Um, I think MetaWeather has an API. Is this free? Hearts. Hearts. <laughs> I love struggling like this. Uh, I think this API is free. Let me see. We're going to build a web weather app. That's what we're about to do. We're building a weather app. Um, and we're going to build it from scratch. I think. Open weather map. I basically, I want a weather API that um, that doesn't need an API key. Open weather map. Oh, this requires an API key, though, doesn't it? I've used this one before. I'll, I'll, this will be my backup. If I can't f figure out meta, because I'm pretty sure meta weather um, doesn't require an API key. Query equals Denver. So I'm in Denver, Colorado. That's where I'm at right now. Um, as you can see, the beautiful Denver skyline. <laughs> but that returned nothing. Uh, what if I put in my zip code? That's also nothing. Um, oh, you're in Denver too? Nice, nice. Hey. Yeah, a beautiful resolution. <laughs> like, how HD is that skyline? Right? Right? Um, okay. That did not work. Lat long, query. Oh, maybe I just need to put Denver. There's nothing wrong with an API key. I just want to make it simple. <laughs> Use a temperature sensor. We're not going to get that. We're not going to get that tricky. But um, OK, so this returns the weather ID and the latitude longitude. OK, so I think there's some other endpoints. Let's see. 
Um, oh, that's okay. That just returns a location. Now, what if we want weather at a specific location? Weather on a specific day. Cool. Um, and then will this give us... Wait, wait, wait. Better looking than mine. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do it. So, so w basically, what I'm what I'm doing right now is some research. I'm gonna figure out what API we're gonna use, and then once we figure that out, I'm gonna start explaining things, and we're actually gonna build an app with it. Um, however, this does not seem to work. Let's see. If I do this, and then we grab the weather ID. Um. Because we got back a weather ID, which is this. And if I put that there, hey, that's what I want. Because this gives me, I think, a daily forecast. Um, consolidated weather. Why am I? I'm just trying. I'm just trying. <laughs> um, so heavy rain, applicable date today. Yeah, yeah. So this is the weekly forecast. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so we've got get a location, then we've got the, the weekly forecast, and it all just works. All right, we're going to use this, and we're going to do our best to build a weather app really, really quick. Add weather to entropy? I could do that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people here. We got raided by uh, Kit Boga. Again, shout out Kit Boga. Oh, wait, did I lose another? Thank you, uh, Viojosh, <laughs> for, <the laughs> uh, for that Twitch Prime sub. Um... All right, so we have two API endpoints. You call this one, that gives you back a location. You call this one, that gives you back a weather forecast. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Again, yeah, there, yeah, we, yeah, Kip, yeah, we got read by Kip Boga. The Boga fam's here. Can we get some uh, Boga pecans in the chat? Heart. <laughs> um, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build a very basic website where the user can. <laughs> I call APIs all the time, but they never call me back. <laughs> We're going to build a very basic website where the user inputs their location, or we could even get their current location. I think initially, we'll just allow the user to put in the location. Um, we'll see like a little loading spinner, and then we're going to show them the current forecast for their city. We're going to build a very simple app that does that. Let's start. Um, so I'm going to make a directory called simple weather app, and um, we're going to write the code right here. Here we go. So uh, websites are made up of HTML, CSS, and, and JavaScript. Uh, what we need first is the HTML. That's going to be like the basis for our web page. So I'm going to create a file called index.html. Uh, the font will be gigantic. You Just you wait and see. <laughs> and then we have a, a basic HTML document. So um, HTML is made up of these things called tags. You can see that there's like a less than sign and a greater than sign, and it has like head and meta and title. All of this stuff uh, is used um, uh, in the browser. So you see how this says uh, document? If I put here uh, weather app, um, in the browser, when you look in the, the tab, like this thing, that will actually say weather app. <laughs> yeah, there's a blink tag, there's a marquee tag, there's, there's a lot of different tags. Um, one tag that we care about is like the H1. So the H1 stands for heading one. Uh, I prefer a two space tab. I do prefer technically spaces. I don't type, if you can, you can watch me code. Uh, should we do it in 13 minutes and 37 seconds? Yeah, let's do that. I'll set a timer. I'll set a timer. What is 13 minutes and 37 seconds in seconds? We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it as fast as possible. <laughs> That's a lot of seconds. Third, wait. What's? Let's just see. If I do thirteen thirty-seven seconds, eight hundred seventeen seconds, eight seventeen. All right, we're gonna do it in eight hundred seventeen seconds. Um, let's see. Yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> What's the follow count going down on my overlay? Um, it should be going up, if anything. <laughs> but the the thing on the on the far side is the number of followers, and the next thing is the number of subscribers. 
Okay, let's, who, who's excited? First off, who's excited? Type one in the chat if you're excited to see this weather app. We're basically gonna make a web page. someone puts in their location, we tell them what the weather is. Are you excited? Who's excited? One, excited, nice, nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome, okay. Let's do it. Um, and um, you all are going to be a part of content. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to do this in 13 minutes and 37 seconds content, and we're going to upload it to YouTube afterwards. Um, so um, welcome to this coding challenge where in 13 minutes and 37 seconds, I will create a weather app that talks to the Meta Weather API. This. <laughs> well, we're going to build a basic web page where the user can input their location, and then we're going to get back the weather and display the weather, weather on the web page. Um, so let's go. I have a basic HTML file, um, and uh, right now we have this H1. And I'm going to say uh, weather app. Let's just let's just put the word weather. We're going to put the weather word weather right there. Um, now I want to actually run this website that I'm building. So I'm going to use a tool called uh, Light Server. Um, Basically, this is just a static file server that does this. Yep. And so as you can see, uh, like I mentioned, the title affects what appears here. So we have the title, which is weather. And then the H1, which we saw in the body, that defines what we can actually see on the page. I was here. <laughs> so yeah, now we need somebody. You saw somebody mentioning in the chat, we need styles. Because this is kind of ugly, right? That's like a really ugly font. Let's make this look a little bit nicer. So for that, we're going to link a style sheet. So I'm going to add a link. And... Um, that link will be to styles.css. So CSS is the thing that actually applies styles and can do layout on the web page. So we're going to create this file called styles.css. Not that. Uh, styles.css. And then inside of it, uh, I'm going to do a couple of things. First thing is I'm going to target the body. Uh, the body is this specific tag. It's the thing that wraps all of the other elements. So we target that. And we're going to say the font family uh, will be um, sans serif. We'll just do that, sans serif. And watch, the moment I do that, now we have a somewhat nicer font, right? It's not that uh, that ugly. <laughs> the thing with serifs, Times New Roman. So we have a nice font. That's beautiful. Um, wait, what's terrible? I, I missed your other chat. Okay, so uh, we have that. But now let's also center the title, right? So we have this H1 here. Oh, not Comic Sans. <laughs> We're just going to do sans serif. It's going to be a very basic website. Um, and then... The Let's say we want to put this text in the, in the center. We can also target it in our CSS. So I'm going to say that h1 has a text align of center. And just like that, it goes right to the center. Beautiful, beautiful. Our app is coming along. Uh, now we need a way for the user to put in their location. So for that, we're going to create a form. Uh, we're going to use vanilla JavaScript. This is just super basic stuff. Um, so we'll have a form. And um, inside of this form, we will have a label. That label will say, um, wait, why did that happen? There we go. Uh, the label will say, enter a location. And then we're going to have an input where the user can actually put in their location. So we'll say input, like that. All right. Now, <laughs> as you can see, we have a form, but it's ugly. Let's make it look a little bit nicer with our CSS. But we have the label, which says enter location, and then we have the input. Graphic design. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a class to this. So you've seen in the CSS so far, I am just targeting by like body, h1, all that stuff. Um, you can also target by class. Actually, to keep it simple, we're not even going to add classes. People are going to hate me for this, but that's fine. We're just going to target um, this specific form. So what I'm going to do with the form is I'm going to say its width will be uh, 60%. And then I'm going to give it a margin um, zero auto. And that should center the form on the page. So technically, the form is centered. It's taking up 60% uh, of the page, though. Now, I want that input to be bigger, and I want it to be full, full width. So I'm going to say the input has a display block. There's no Comic Sans. Calm down. There's no Comic Sans. <laughs> and the width here, oh, actually, uh, that should do it. So if I put it to display block, Actually, that puts it on its own line. And then I'll say the width is 100%. So now that input takes up 100% of the parent. And let's actually go even smaller than that. Let's say this form is only 30% width. So it should be shorter. That's great. Um, and then let's add a little bit of uh, margin. So you can see right now that the label is like exactly on top of that input. I want to space them out a little bit. So I'm going to say that the input has some margin top. 
and we'll just do like 10 pixels and that should bump it down just a little bit. That's great. Okay. Um, let's also increase the font size. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, we're gonna go really big. We're gonna say the font size is, um, I don't know, 32 pixels. Let's see what that gives us. Boom. That's okay. I'm okay with that. We only have eight minutes left, so I gotta, I gotta get moving. Um, okay. <laughs> So we have the location. I also want the text here. Um, I want that to have the same font size. Um, so I actually need to apply this to the input as well. So we'll do that. And now enter a location like Denver. Uh, I need a button. And then when I click that button, we need to get the weather for Denver. Um, so let's put a button. And this will say, um, get weather. We're building a very simple weather app. Um, OK, so button. Um, type here is going to be submit. So when I click submit, it's going to submit the form. Uh, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, that's a nice font. Thank you, Simon. Um, right here. Like that. Cool. So that, that will be, instead of sans serif, it'll look a little bit nicer. Let's see what we get. It looks almost exactly the same. <laughs> okay, um, that's fine. So now, but now you can see that button is really ugly. We need to style that button. And you know what I'm gonna do to style that button? I'm gonna copy paste some code. So there's there's a guy that's written an article uh, on CSS buttons. Um, I think it's, is it this one? Yeah, this is it. Um, and he's written some CSS that gives us give us some really ni nice looking buttons like these. Uh, and I could write that CSS myself, but we only have seven minutes left. So I'm going to take their code, their CSS code, I'm going to put it into my page. Um, so right here at the bottom, I'm going to paste that code in. But um, I'm also going to format it so it looks good in here. But you can see right now this is a different target. I want to target the button like that. And um, we'll target the button here like that and we'll target uh, the button here like that. And um, what we need to do is actually want, I think I want the button to be black. Let's see what we get. So now that I've added those styles, you can barely see the button. When I hover, it has that. But what I want to do is it should be black, I think, like a black button. Let's see. Um, so button, let's do. Um, the font size of this is also going to be very big. So we're going to increase the button font size to 42. Um, and then the background we'll say is black, like that. What do we get? Nice. Look at that. Um, um, so that's that's awesome. I'm also going to give it some margin top just so it gets pushed down a little bit. So let's do uh, margin. Wait, do we already have the margin defined on here? We do. So this is uh, top, right, left, bottom. So the top, we're going to make that um, 10 pixels. That's, that's a pretty good looking button. I do have to agree. There we go. <laughs> that's one nice button. Um, we'll also make it so right now you can see, what's up, James Warner? Top right, bottom left. <laughs> Check out James Warner. He's a member of our Live Coders team. Top right, bottom left. Um, so uh, we see that it's doing that. I actually want to give it an outline. I want it to always have a black outline even when we hover over it. Uh, we only have five minutes. We, have, we're gonna have, we only have five minutes to write JavaScript. That'll be fine. Um, outline will be uh, two pixels solid black. Um, and uh, GBL with the upgraded subscription, or uh, Gakpool <laughs> with the upgraded uh, description. Yeah, I'm okay with 100% with too. Let's do that. Who thinks I'm going to be able to finish this app in five minutes? Type one in the chat. Type two if you if you do not believe. Um, and also we're going to do uh, cursor his pointer. <laughs> All right. Two? Okay. Oh, that's really ugly. Look at that. I think it's fine. This is fine, right? Get weather. We click that button, and then it's going to give us the weather. <laughs> 0 0.5. All right, now we need to actually do it. So this, so we used HTML. We used CSS. We had the basic layout of the page. We styled it so it looks a little nicer. But now we actually want some interaction, right? When I click this button, we need to actually call the API. Uh, and we did a little bit of research before. We're using this uh, meta weather API. Uh, which is basically an online service where um, they provide for free a way for you to make requests and get back data that includes uh, the, the weekly forecast. Um, so you see that they have this endpoint, which gives me back some data that tells me the location ID. And then they have this endpoint, which gives me back the specific information about the, um, the upcoming forecast. Cool. Um, so 
what we need to do now is we need to make it interactive with JavaScript. So I'm going to add a script tag here. Source, we're just going to call this app.js. Thank you, David, for those 100 bits. One, 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 one. <laughs> um, in our app.js is where we're going to make it happen. So first thing I need to do is I need to select this form and listen for when that form is submitted. So let's do that. Um, we'll say our form is document.query selector form. Um, so this is a function where you can pass in any CSS selector, and that will get that element on the page and, and allow us to access it in JavaScript. And we can do it. we got three minutes. Um, and then I'm going to add an event listener for when that form is submitted. And uh, then we can actually call the API. Uh, and thank you, Murdoch, for those 100 bits. Andrew, you know. You know, Andrew. Oh, there's a hype train? <laughs> all right. Well, I have three minutes. I have to finish this. But thank you all for the hype train. OK, first thing, event.preventDefault. So that'll stop the page from refreshing and say, hey, we're going to handle this with JavaScript. Uh, we then need to grab what the user entered. Um, so let's just put this input here, document.query selector for the input. Um, and then here, we should get access to the input.value. So the we'll call this the location is uh, input.value. Now that I have the location, I need to call the API. So uh, this API allows you to pass in a location search term. Thank you for those bits. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, you pass in the location, and that gives you back the location ID. Um, and actually, can I do just location slash it'll 202? Not found. OK, so we do need to call this API endpoint first. All right. So um, we're going to create a function called get location. Um, that takes in the name of the location, and then we need to call the API. So we're going to call that API. Uh, we're going to make this an async function. <laughs> no way. Oh, I'm going to do it. We're going to do it. It's going to be It's gonna be great. Um, we need to call this, and then right there, we're going to put the name. Uh, actually, let's just, just call this get weather. <laughs> There's no time to write it correct. We only have a minute. Uh, it gets the weather. Um, and then we need to get that JSON response. Um, and let's just log it to make sure that it's working. Um, OK, so here, when they submit the form, we'll say get weather. We'll pass in that location. And then that should um, call the API, get the location. And then if that works, we have about less than a minute to get the data, add it to the page. So we're going to look at the dev tools. Uh, are we into our location in Denver? We click Get Weather. No! <laughs> of course, error. I didn't know their API didn't support cores. That's fine. We're going to use uh, cores anywhere, which is a cores proxy. Cores is a whole thing. Uh, it's a thing. Um, there are other ways to solve it. Um, but this is how I'm going to solve it right now, because I'm in a hurry. All right. Denver. Get Weather. Yes, all right, so we get back in array. Now, we have 50 seconds to get the location um, from that. And then we call the other API um, to get that specific information about that location. So this will be location slash uh, location dot ID. What is that thing called? Dot W-O-E-I-D. Weather, 420. <laughs> All right, so we call that. Um, and then we get back the response. And then I'm just going to do document.write. Uh, we need to do consolidated weather at 0. Um, dot uh, weather state name. <laughs> All right. Um, I think it's it. So we're out of time. We're totally out of time. But I, th I think we've got it. Um, we're at least going to show what the current weather conditions are for that location. <laughs> and uh, let's see if it worked. All right. So if I put in Denver and I click Get Weather, did it work? Heavy rain. <laughs> Heavy rain. Um, all right. So I'm going to probably take another five minutes. Um, <laughs> If the location is invalid, everything breaks. Look, we did it! We did it! <laughs> cool. All right, uh, somebody somebody, give me a location. Ship it! <laughs> um, 
Uh, give me one location. I'll put it in, and you can tell me whether or not this thing is right. <laughs> it's, it's production code. Thank you for the bits. Uh, Washington DC. I'll do uh, Washington. I'll do Washington DC. Washington DC. Uh, get weather. Heavy rain. Wait, is it heavy rain everywhere? <laughs> Somebody give me a location where it's not raining. Um, Vienna? In your message, put location name, not raining. <laughs> Seattle's probably raining, right? I see all these. Tell me one of these cities that isn't raining. Document dot right. Heavy <laughs> rain. Yeah. Houston's not raining. All right, we'll do Houston, Texas. Let's try it. Get weather. Mm. Get weather. Heavy clouds. <laughs> Alright. Um, let's make this app better, though. Um, first of all, I need to check, make sure that nothing's on fire. Cool, nothing's on fire. Alright, we're going to take a little bit more time. <laughs> um, heavy something. <laughs> What's Marbella? Marbella? Get the weather can't find it so you can see that there's there's a lot of issues happening here right if we can't find the location the 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 api just kind of like errors out yeah i'll explain the course problem too i'll do that yeah let's let's take our time we don't always have to rush here <laughs> hello everyone first of all um let's explain that course error why did i have to do this um Yeah, so there, there's a lot of checks that need to happen. I need to make sure, did the user actually enter in something? Thank you, Umheck, for those bits. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. Are we still in? Yeah, we're still on hype train. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Egypt is not raining. Let's see Egypt. I'm curious. Um, Egypt. Get weather. Location. Get <laughs> Um, For some reason, their API does not like Egypt in the query string. Yeah, it returns nothing. It's very unfortunate. Um, what if we put in a, a zip code? No. Thank you for the 100 bits. 200 bits. <laughs> Thank you everyone for the bits. Oh, you can't get the weather of a country. You're right. But this doesn't let I, I this doesn't let me pass in the um, the zip code. That's really weird. <laughs> um, query San. London. This API is weird. There are a lot of other APIs that... Is this a location? Let's try it. I don't know if this API supports that. Does not support that. Yeah, I'm just looking at the, the API docs. Um, <laughs> Abuja, Nigeria. Let's try it. Nope. Yeah, this API is not great. <laughs> um, yeah, so there are a lot of other better, uh, there are a lot of other better weather APIs, um, but they require an API key. That's why I thought we would just use this one, but apparently, I don't know. Uh, let me try Dublin, Ireland. Well. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is a really bad API. Should we start over? Should we just do a whole new thing? Um, yeah, l first first of all, let's take let's take a scrap it. <laughs> I'm gonna, actually I'm going to use Open Weather Map. Well, no, Open Weather Map. Um, open Weather Map doesn't give you the forecast. It only tells you the current weather, right? I think it costs money to get a forecast. Oh, yeah, this number goes down because I'm only showing the last 100 messages, so it's not detecting those other follows, yeah. Yeah, Clash of Code is different. <laughs> Math.random, heavy rain. <laughs> um, you can send bits by clicking the, the down there in the chat. Um, there's a little bits icon you click on. All right, let's look at public weather as APIs. Could create our own. We could go out and do a survey. We could hire 100 people to get to go around with thermometers to check the current weather everywhere. <laughs> we should poll how much time it should take me, and then the average of all of that time um, is the time that I should take to do it. All right, 
regardless, I'm sorry, <laughs> I get sidetracked. Let's talk about cores. So uh, when you are requesting websites, so as, as you can see, my website, this is just a local website. Eventually, if I put this on the internet, it would be at like some domain, like CJ's cool, my name is CJ, by the way, I don't think I said that earlier, but CJ's cool website.com. Um, that's a totally different website, right? And if we take a, if we uh, look at this, we're trying to request data from this other website, which is metaweather.com. So that's that's the first idea here with course are that there are different origins. So uh, and thank you for those bits. Much appreciated. Um, what am I using to develop this? It's just VS Code. So VS Code is just a simple text editor. It lets me edit the text files and then I have a, a local static file server. But uh, this website is at one origin. It's at localhost. This website is at metaweather.com. That's another origin. This website is at fdocena.com. Uh, this website is github.com. So each one of these websites is a different... Yeah, my name is CJ. <laughs> Each one of these websites is a different origin. Uh, and we saw a second ago that we got this error, which is the cross-origin uh, resource sharing error. And it's basically a, a security restriction. Um, so I'm going to remove these cores things here, and we'll see that error again. So if I request Denver, you can see here, uh, cross-origin request blocked. The same origin policy disallows reading the remote resource here. Um, Reason cores header is missing. <laughs> so what this is saying is this API, which I don't own, metaweather.com, it's a whole other thing. They provide this weather data. The weather comes from there. I have my website. My website is either here or at some other domain. Those are two different origins, right? And this is a security feature of the browser because uh, let's say this were like a banking API or some other secure thing that you should not be able to make requests from other websites, They that the browser is going to block that, right? So if the other server has not explicitly allowed this origin to make the request, that's why we get this error. Um, and I'll show you where this comes into play for the actual network request. Um, so if you look at the network tab, when we make this call here, uh, we can see in the response headers. So response headers are like metadata about the request. Um, we can see that it's allowing certain things. Um, it has the like a server a header, all this stuff. But the header that it's missing is the access control allow origin header. Oh, we did we did a hype train. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Eight subs, seventeen hundred bits. Oh, you're too kind. Too kind. Too kind. Thank you all very much. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. What are we doing? Cores. Cores? Cores. Yes. If you look at the headers, there is no header that has the name access control allow origin. And that header allows a server to specify. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's small bits of HTML enabled in the chat. Uh, the font is called Anonymous Pro. If you do exclamation mark VS Code, you can get a link to all my settings and all that stuff. Um, so cross uh, access control allow origin is the header. Now. Um, when I put this on there, this is a, a free service that's a proxy. Basically, what we do is we're passing this URL into this other service, Cores Anywhere, and th this proxy is going to add that header, which allows any origin to make the request. So if you look here, and if we look at the network tab here, whenever I make that request, let's clear this up. I'll type in Denver. Um, now, if we look at the response headers, we should see access control allow origin. So because I passed this request through that proxy, it automatically adds this header for me so that the browser will allow the request. Now, like I mentioned, there are other ways to solve it. You could set up your own proxy. Um, you could set up a backend server that hits the API instead of you passing the URL to a proxy. But that, that's the main reason. This header is missing, and this header says to the browser, hey, anyone is allowed to make the request. I'm trying to do it. Anyone is allowed to make the request with a star. You can also put a specific origin. All right. I think, so I technically have to go, but I'm going to spend 15 minutes. I'm going to spend 15 minutes just making this app look better. <laughs> it's a more reasonable timer. Um, we're going to make this app look better, and we're going to show like error messages and stuff like that. Couldn't find weather data for Houston. Heavy clouds. <laughs> All right, let's make this better. So the first thing is, uh, if the user doesn't enter a location, we should show an error. Like if they click this, we should say, hey, uh, location is required. Yeah. 
All right. Um, I mean, I've been streaming. Have I really only been streaming for an hour? It feels like three hours. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, how do you add multiple origins? You have to do it dynamically. So your backend server can look at the incoming request. And if that um, request comes from the an origin that you want to um, whitelist, then you respond with that origin in that header. But you, you can't have multiple origins. You just need a, a, a backend that dynamically sets it if you have multiple. Yeah. Thank you all for the follows. Appreciate you. One hour straight in 30 seconds. Yeah, it's only been an hour. OK, first off, let's show an error. Um, and I'm going to have a, in a section for errors. I'm going to do that right here. So I have a, just a div. Um, this is where I'm going to use classes. So I'm going to give this a class of error. And if there is an error, I'm going to put an error message inside of that div. Um, but here, we're going to style the errors. We're going to say error has a color of red um, and a font style of italic. Cool. Um, then we're going to get that error element. Kitboga made a lot of people reload. Oh, really? Like to remove the raid handler? Did that really happen? That's that's way too nice. That's way too nice. <laughs> Thank you, Kitboga. <laughs> if that's the case. OK, um, so we need this error element. Uh, we'll do uh, document.querySelector. And uh, we'll say error. So. Um, this will select the element that has the error class. Um, cool, yeah. <laughs> Who's punk? I don't know. <laughs> and thank you, uh, Warren BT, for that Twitch Prime sub. Okay, so we have the error element. Um, first thing we'll do is we'll say um, if the user did not enter in a location, then we're going to update that error message. So we're going to say. Um, Error dot text content equals um, you must enter a location. Cool. Um, if they did enter a location, then we're going to clear out any error that was there before. OK, so now uh, if we do this, we see you must enter a location. Uh, let's center that text really quick. So on the error here, um, we will have um, a text align. Uh, center. Yeah, and, and uh, American 2050, um, America, American 2050 has a good question. Uh, why am I using a class? Um, in The thing is, in larger projects, you typically would reuse things. And something like an error class is definitely reusable because you have errors like all over your website. Um, so right now, you're absolutely right. There's only one error. But I'm in the habit of putting it in a class so that it can be reused if you wanted to. But you're totally right. We could put it as an ID and then target it by ID. But the tricky thing with IDs is there can only be one thing with an ID at any given time. Yeah. All right. See you later, Ripley. Thank you for those gifted subs. Yeah. Appreciate you. Recommended. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. OK. Um, great. So now we're showing an error message. That's great. <laughs> so we click that, and it says, you must enter a location. It's beautiful, right? Um, now, if I put in Denver and click Get Weather, um, it, <laughs> it replaces the page. We don't want that. Uh, let's find a nice, uh, a nice little GIF. Uh, how many people are going to close the stream because I say GIF with a soft G? Loading. <laughs> um, I need a good loading image. GIF? GIF. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. It's just how I say it. Um, we're gonna go. With, we're gonna go with this one. Let's go with this one. Peace. <laughs> um, let's look at this. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, but what I'm gonna do? Unsub, unfollow, undonate. <laughs> Uh, what we're going to do is whenever the user clicks uh, get weather, uh, we're going to uh, show, oh, I'll see you later. Uh, we're going to show that uh, that GIF of the of the, the hand doing this thing. So let's add that on the page. Um, so right here, we'll have a, uh, a div. We'll give this a class of loading. Oh, thank you, Simon. Let me paste this in, and then I'll get that. 10 minutes left. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> so I have an image. The source is that. Um, 
And so that should appear. And I think Simon gave us a nice red color. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> Show the clap emote. The, the graphics interchange format. Um, so I'm going to call this one loading. Um, and then we'll style it. But also right now we have a better color for our, um, our, our, our error. Like that. Okay, that should be a nice... Cool. Um, however, oh, I didn't save the HTML, so I'll save this, and now we get this this loading thing. That's too big. Well, I'll set it smaller. So I'm going to style the loading image um, to be centered and smaller. So we'll do uh, the text align of the loading is center, and then the image that's inside of loading, because loading is the container, will have a width of like. 200 pixels. Let's see what happens. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, this is this is vanilla JavaScript. There's no frameworks here. So what we want to do is we want to hide that loading image when the page first loads. Um, so let's do that. Um, over here in app, we will say um, loading image is document.query selector. That's hot. <laughs> Document query selector with loading. Um, and when when the page first spins up, we're just going to immediately hide it. Vanilla JS. So I'll say loading image dot style dot display is none. So what this should do is when the page loads, there's no loading image, right? But um, when we click get weather, we want to show the loading image. So we'll do the reverse. Um, right here, if they actually did enter in a location, we're going to do. Um, we're going to remove that none property. So now, if I put in Denver, click get, you see it's loading, loading, and then we see the result. Cool. <laughs> oh, what's up, Ed? Yeah, we got we got raided by Kit Boga earlier. Um, vanilla. Yeah, and I'm using a blue screen. Um, this is a rough approximation of what's actually happening, but this is also a blue image on top of my blue screen. Um, but I can do things like this. See the Denver skyline? It's beautiful, beautiful. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we got raided by Kit Boga for sure. Um, we'll try to do that. I have seven minutes left to make this nicer. So we're checking to make sure they enter a location. What we need to do now is we need to inspect the response. So um, if there is a location from the response, then we can actually get the weather like this. Um, but if there was not, then we need to say that that location was not found. Yeah, Kit Boga is great. Um, he's probably one of the first people I followed on Twitch. Um, uh, Alka, do you have a command to see how long I've been following Kit Boga? And then you can also do the command that says how old my account is. Um, OK, uh, location not found. I, I really like this loading image. I've used it for a few things before. OK, not quite. But I did follow them 241 days ago. <laughs> and then the account is, I mean, technically, I only started using this account like seven months ago. Yeah. Um, OK, so what, what I've, <laughs> yeah, this account is really new. What I've done now is if we put something in like Egypt, um, it's going to try. I thought it would try. Refresh. OK. Let me double check this. So. If there is a location, um, show the loading image, hide the error, get the weather at that location. If we get back a response, show it. Otherwise, um, set the error text to be location not found. Oh, and we need to, um, no, that should do it. Error text content location not found. OK, one more time. One more time. Um, Egypt. Get weather. Loading. And then location not found. Uh, one thing we need to do inside of that get weather function um, is we need to hide the loading image after the results actually come back. So uh, we'll do that uh, here. Yeah, and, and this weather API is the um, the meta weather API. I'll, I'll link it really quick. It's okay. We've found that there's there are actually a ton of locations that we that don't actually show up. <laughs> but in a second, I'll put this I'll put this site on the internet so you can try it. And you can tell me if it finds your location or not. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, metaweather.com.
There you go. All right, where are we at? Uh, yeah, so now we will hide the loading image when we get back the result. Oh, when did that countdown show up again? Oh, when I switched back to this view. <laughs> that countdown is old. Um, who asked about that? Uh, yeah, no, this this countdown is just a browser overlay. Alka actually made it. It's just a simple, simple countdown. Okay, so uh, we try to type in Egypt. Egypt is a country, not a lo an actual location. So it says location not found. Very good. Yeah, it's coming out good. Now, if we type something like Denver, try. Great, and then and it replaces the whole page. So now, um, instead of replacing the entire page, let's actually put the forecast right below it. Um, so right here, I'm gonna have a div and we'll call this uh, the results. And this is where I'm gonna put uh, the weather forecast for the week. We're gonna put that there. Um, so in my JavaScript, I need a variable for results. Results, um, and then right here, so document.write replaces the entire page. I don't wanna do that. I basically wanna look at the forecast and um, we'll, we'll create um, like the upcoming forecast for all of this. Yeah, Streamlabs has a new profile picture. It does, yeah, that's the new one. <laughs> they changed it. Um, okay, so yeah, we're not gonna do document write. Um, we're actually going to iterate over the results. And if we look at this response, this is the, the forecast response. So it has consolidated weather, which has the weather for each of the upcoming days. Um, there are weather sources. Um, info here. It's fine. I think, <clears throat> actually, we could do sunrise and sunset. Let's do that. So basically, we're going to build up a big HTML string with all of the results. Um, so I'll say like uh, result HTML um, is a big old string. And at the top, we're going to have um, like sunrise and sunset. Something goes there. Something like that. Uh, the weather in Area 51. If anyone knows the name of the city, we could plug that in. Okay, so uh, we're going to put the sunrise there. We're going to put the sunset there. Uh, what else do we want? Um, we'll look at each day, and we'll show the applicable date, min and max temperature. Yeah, I kind of need like a separate HTML item for each of those. So... Um, Yeah, we can make it look like a proper seven day forecast. I guess we'll just do that. Like I can make it look like this. That's basically what I want it to look like, right? I'll do that. <laughs> we're, we're gonna do this. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll do that. Cause this API, I think they, well, they provide a way for us to get the images as well. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna replicate this. I know I won't make it in time. Well, this is how it goes here. I always say it's gonna take five minutes and then it takes an hour. <laughs> no, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> um, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say uh, we're going to create a function that says get day HTML or like day card. Um, and then we pass in the specific day. And then that day um, has all of these things. So what we want to show at the top is like the min and max temperature. How do I keep myself motivated? Sometimes, uh, and, and stay, co wait, wait, okay, <laughs> let me read this. How do I keep myself motivated while coding and staying focused? I sometimes have a blackout when I don't know how to start a project and I just leave it there. I really love the coding thing, but as a beginner who never made a whole project, it's hard. What would you recommend me to do in order to keep motivated? You just have to keep building things. I would say, um, also like set goals for yourself. Like if you want to do this one specific project, um, have uh, achievable goals for that project. Like, uh, I want to work on this project and I want to make sure that this project is deployed. I want to make sure that it at least has X, Y, Z features. The thing about projects is, is they like, they never end. Um, 
potentially. It's it's always easy to like write the code better or add more features. Um, and so if you don't have an intended goal in mind, it's really hard to say like I'm done or at least did what I wanted to do. It can always it becomes more of like a daunting task. It's like oh it's that thing, and there's all that stuff that I haven't done yet. I don't know. Maybe that helps. I don't know. We're out of time. <laughs> we're out of time. <laughs> exactly. Break your project up into tasks and do as many as many tasks as you can. Oh, here's the thing. <laughs> Chat is is very much a distraction. <laughs> um, but I mean, on honestly, like chat is 50% of the show here on, on Coding Garden. Like, Coding Garden, it probably would exist without the chat, but... I mean, I don't know. I, I appreciate you all. <laughs> thanks, thanks thanks for being here. All, all the people here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is more distracting. Like, I, I actually could have coded this app in 13 minutes if I wasn't talking out loud and seeing all the chats happening. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Where was I going? We need this. So we have this data. We, we need to just put it in a card. Uh, their protections are not useless, no, um, because um, that proxy potentially won't have all of the same cookies. Well, it definitely won't, especially if they're HTTP-only cookies. It's not going to have cookies that are associated with the domain that you're requesting through the proxy, so it prevents um, cross-site request forgery if you're attempting to make a request through a, through a proxy like that. Yeah. Yeah, th yeah there you go. FV has it. Yeah, I mean, this, this, like, this, if I was not talking to the chat, then this would not be a, this would not be a live stream. This would just be me in a room talking. I mean, technically, I could be making YouTube videos. I don't know. Yeah. You're very, you're very welcome, Jan. Yeah, we've got stretches. We've got hydrates. <clears throat> Thank you for being here, not being me. <laughs> This would have been a YouTube. We we've derailed. And this is basically what happens on the coding garden. Okay, but we need some HTML. What I'm gonna do is a, have a div. This will have a class of like weather card. Um, and then we have these properties here, and so we somehow have to use these properties. Um, so we have the min temp. Let's do something like we'll have. Like a paragraph tag, and then inside of that we'll have a span. Give this a class of label. Content. Content. <laughs> um, so this will say min, and then right there we want to put um, day.min temp. And then we'll do, so we'll have a label, and then we'll also have a value. I think Alka can set the title. Actually, I think uh, you should be able to set the title. Any mod can set the title with, uh, and you any mod can update those commands too. Help me out. <laughs> I got a lot going on. Um, value. Okay, so we have uh, class and value. Inventory app is not dead. Entropy is not dead. We just got a lot of other things going on right now, but we'll get we'll get back to them. Thank you, XPs, for those hundred bits. Um, okay, so basic, basically what I'm doing right now is I'm looking at all this data that comes back from the API for each individual day, and I am um, constructing some HTML that's actually going to display that data. So we have the min temperature, we have the max temperature. Um, what else do we want? The current temperature, the temp. <laughs> So we'll do we'll do this. Um, say current. Yeah, so we're gonna try to present it as nicely as possible. So this is basically gonna be like a current value, min value, max value. But we'll have to add some styles as well. Um, and so this is the temp. Yeah, I think that makes sense, uh, Titan Fuss, because these are like really big numbers. So we we want to round these to like two decimal places. I think I'll do um, two fixed because that'll that'll make it two decimal places. Like that. All right, current, min, max. Um, we'll add all of this other stuff too, but uh, applicable date, we want to show that. Oh, if, if you can, Alka, just say like building a simple weather app. Yeah, or if that one works. Thank you, Andrew. I don't know if that worked. Um, okay, now we can take the applicable date and let's just put that at the top here. 
Uh, if you type exclamation mark drop space me in the chat, it'll drop your avatar and possibly land just like that. Great job. Who was that? Uh, Andrew Lane. Good drop. Good drop. Good job. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we have... Do I have... Oh, then. Thank you. I'll fix that. The, the temp. Um, and then we'll also just put the day here. The applicable date. Okay. We're going to get more things, but um, for now, <laughs> this should this should be enough. Uh, and then we'll make it look pretty, and then I, I got to go. Um, okay, so um, get back. We'll say, if the JSON response has a consolidated weather property, then we're going to do this. Um, otherwise we show an error. So the, the interesting thing about this is there are actually two API requests. I have to make one API request that first gets the location ID. And then once I have the location ID, I make a second API request to get the, the forecast for that specific location. Um, and it's possible that the first one fails. If the first one fails, we say location not found. Um, if the second one fails, we'll just say uh, error getting forecast data. Something like that. But if it didn't fail, then we actually have this array, consolidated weather, that we can iterate over. Um, so let's say the HTML starts off as just an empty string. And then we're going to iterate over this list of each day. And we're going to say HTML plus equals this, this function we wrote, get day card with that specific day. Um, and so that will build up one big old HTML string with all of the HTML we need for all of the days. Um, oh, HTML plus day card, sorry. <laughs> Um, so that gets a whole bunch of HTML. And then now we can take all of that HTML and put it into the results here. So we'll say results.innerHTML equal that HTML. Avatar reload is a refresh user. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, um, my the the easiest suggestion is free code camp. Uh, it's a totally free online curriculum for uh, learning how to code. And um, they have lessons, they have projects you can build. It, it's a really great way to, to learn. Um, that said, it shouldn't be the only way you learn because there, there are a ton of different places you can learn online. There's paid courses, free courses, YouTube, but free, free code camp is a good um, launching point for that, uh, I would say. If I can't get a location code, could I try a different API? It's definitely possible. Like, we could basically do that here. Like, if it wasn't found, try some other backup API. Um, but I'm not going to add that. And yes, we are using inner HTML. The, the reason people are freaking out is because this potentially has a cross-site scripting vulnerability. However, however, um, I trust this API that we're calling. <laughs> And I trust that they're not going to be sending back anything that could be potentially injected as a cross-site script. But you must be careful with that. Yeah, time to learn. Nice. <laughs> um, all right, why is this complaining? HTML is never reassigned. That. I mean, technically, I want to do that. But it doesn't like that because I'm returning an assignment. I'm going to disable that. This should still work. All right. Now, watch before your eyes as we get a weekly forecast. Nice. Look at that. <laughs> it's really ugly, though. Uh, we got to make it look a little bit better. Um, but yeah, we have uh, today, uh, tomorrow, the day after that, the day after that. And we have, what is this, Celsius? How can I get Fahrenheit? Oh, no. <laughs> is it possible to get Fahrenheit? <laughs> so ugly. It is ugly. <laughs> it is ugly. Ship it. <laughs> Uh, let's look at Paris. Yeah, and one thing we should do is we should clear out the results um, if we... Yeah, so I'll do something like this. Whenever we're trying to get the weather, reset it. Forget Fahrenheit. <laughs> but 
you're, you're American 2050. <laughs> we could convert it. I think the API should be able to respond with it, though, right? Let's see. Unit. No. Down with Fahrenheit. I mean, I kind of agree, but it's what I've used all my life because I live in the U.S. It's really hard for me to com convert. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 what I was looking for in the API documentation is can you tell it, hey, give me back uh, some other thing? Well, we're stuck with Celsius. <laughs> that's fine. Um, but uh, I actually like what uh, InfraMath Music is, uh, is doing. Um, let's put that here. So let's put that little degrees icon. And so we can clarify. So we basically want this little d degrees C thing. Yeah, we could do the math, and that would actually allow us to have like um, a toggle. So you could toggle between or set your preference for Fahrenheit versus um, Celsius. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Convert the value to Fahrenheit, even though I prefer Celsius. <laughs> it is a simple formula. Okay, what's the formula? I don't know. I have to go. Like, I, I literally have to go to work. Why not, Kelvin? You're right. <laughs> Um, this is fine. I'll leave. This is an exercise for the reader or for the viewer. Take my code and make it so that it can toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit. All right. We're not quite done yet. Uh, we do need to play, display the current condition. Um, I believe. So weather states HC. Do we get the, yeah. So we get the abbreviation and then we can use that to display. Watch this. Watch this. I can't call in sick. I'm literally working from home. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you, Feels Man. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Um, well, okay. The, the, this you are going. I, I swear. If you have not, if you're not interested yet, and you haven't seen anything cool yet, um, you are about to see something cool. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna display the weather icon for each individual thing. Um, and so I believe they have a like a specific URL. Unknown elephant with a Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much. Yeah. Watch. <laughs> All right, hey, right, watch, watch, watch. Are you ready? You're gonna, you're gonna love this so much. I, I swear, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, what? How did you do that? Actually, I don't know if you're gonna like it that much, but it's, I think it's cool. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we can see in the forecast it gives back the weather state abbreviation, like heavy rain, clear, heavy cloud, um, and then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass that into this URL because this URL is a, a specific weather image. Right? And so if I do that, um, let's put that there. <laughs> Wait, how did you do that? I haven't done it yet. <laughs> but now, now watch before your eyes as we look at the weather in, in Paris and we should see some images now. Nope, it broke. Uh, <laughs> weather state abbreviation is not defined. Oh, I need to do day, day dot weather state abbreviation. All right, here we go. All right. Um, <laughs> Paris. All right, thinking about it. Nice. Look at it. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, we also asked that you link back to metaweather.com. I can definitely do that. But look at it. We did it. I, I'll fix it. <laughs> we'll, make, we'll make the images smaller. But it works. Um, in an appropriate, sensible way that's applicable to the user. Let, let me let me do that really quick. So I'll just say uh, down here at the bottom in the footer with a small tag, uh, weather data provided by, ah, no, ah, ah, <laughs> metaweather.com. <laughs> it's super partly cloudy. <laughs> Uh, so we have that. I'm going to uh, center the footer. Um, yeah, we're getting there. I think the last thing is just to add some spot styles, which is what I'll do. <laughs> and then I'll go. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, not dot footer, just footer. There we go. Um, let's put some margin top. Like 
500 pixels. We're gonna push it way down. That's too much. 200 pixels. Push it way down. <laughs> um, why do I have a current field for days that are not? Oh, then it will be average. <laughs> or I think that's the average. I don't know. Let me try this again. Denver, get weather. Oh, I need to put the footer below the results. Yeah, I think that's just like, it's not current. You're right. <laughs> See if Malaga gives results. I'll try it. I'm definitely going to make the images smaller. Malaga. Location not found. Looking hot. OK. Um, first of all, this footer needs to go at the bottom like a footer should. Super tiny font size. Average. Is it the average temperature? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna fix the images. Calm down, everyone. Um, cool. It exists. We just couldn't find it. Delhi. There we go. It's currently forty degrees Celsius. I don't know Celsius, but I know that that's hot. <laughs> um. Wow, right? That's hot, right? This is hot. <laughs> um, okay, let's fix this. So, uh, I let's fix the pictures. So, Delhi, um, you saw that I created this class, or I created an element. Wow, <laughs> I created an element that had called weather card. So I'm gonna do some styles for weather card. So we'll say weather card. Um, it is a div, so we'll give it a width. Same width as the uh, the form itself. Well, no. Yeah, yeah. We'll do. We'll give it a max width of thirty percent, or a width of thirty percent. And then um, the image that's inside of the weather card, it will take up a hundred percent of the parent. So just with that, the cards will be smaller. Um, let's also center them. So I'll just do margin zero auto. So we get some centered cards. And then each card, um, oh, perceived temperature. I don't know. It's hot. Regardless, it's hot. <laughs> so each card takes up 30% of the screen. And then the image that's inside of that card takes a up 100% of that. Uh, if you do exclamation mark keyboard, you can get a link to my keyboard. It's, it's nothing special. There it is. Um, OK, so this should look a little bit nicer. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, it's fine. It's fine, isn't it? This is fine. <laughs> I think I'm done. <laughs> I'm gonna put this on the internet so you all can use it, and then I'm done. There are definitely a, there's definitely a lot more than you, that you can do to this. Uh, use a flex box. Well, yeah, actually that could be pretty cool. QA approved. <laughs> All right, let me do this. Uh, let me say that the um, wa watch, 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 watch. So um, the results is display flex. Um, it's going to be flex direction row, and then we'll do flex wrap wrap. All right, watch this. Needs more bootstrap. <laughs> um, yeah, but before I could format the dates, there's a lot we could do. Before I go, I'm going to review all the code that I wrote. I'm going to put this code on GitHub so that you can take this code and make it better um, or make your own version of it. Um, but before that, yeah, we're going to push it to production. Before that, does anyone have another location suggestion that I can throw in here? Um, super hot, very hot. Flexin. I think you're about to be, in it, be amazed. I'll do Phoenix. Are you ready to be amazed? Watch this. Watch this. Wow. <laughs> That's it's just nothing but sun. <laughs> yeah, so because I put it in a flex box, it automatically each thing takes up 30% and then it and then it automatically wraps. Um, and it should actually uh like oh no, cuz I have them have thir they're they're taking up 30%. Yeah. Um we could add media queries that say like uh, when the screen size is a certain amount, then um, increase their size. Yeah. Oh, does that work, Doc? 
What's the weather in New York? I'll, I'll tell you, Andrew. All we gotta do is put into my fancy weather machine. Rain. <laughs> Lots of rain. <laughs> um, okay. Now, what did I just copy? Oh, yeah. Let's make it, instead of saying a date, um, how does that work, though? So built into the browser is this intool.relative time format. How does it work? Oh, there's probably multiple results. We're just picking the first one. You're absolutely right, SPD. We, we might have the wrong uh, Phoenix, excuse me. Um, format. Oh. This is gonna require work, Doc. <laughs> I'm gonna have to like subtract the dates, um, convert it to days. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I think I'm done. I'm done. I'm gonna put this on the internet. It's good enough for now. You're absolutely right. Um, but let, let's do this. I'm gonna review the code, and then we're also gonna put like a, a next steps. Like if you take this code, what could you do better? Um, yeah, you could use something like moment or date functions to automatically get the relative time or like time ago. <laughs> um, average is greater than the max. Then it's not the average. <laughs> it's the um, it's the current. I don't know. Next step, in S. Hey, I think I have a, do I have a, yeah, look at that. Next, that's my, that's my laptop. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> first of all, uh, if multiple locations match, um, trademark. Cool. If multiple locations match, uh, ask the user to clarify. Uh, what else? Uh, show the words tomorrow in two days, etc. instead of the date. Um, <clears throat> that's another thing. Get the, get the user's current location. Um, and use that instead of having them put in uh, a specific thing. Oh, yeah. You could do things like... Uh, for styles, like a background gradient. Um, you could also like call an image API and get a specific type of image based on the current weather. Oh yeah, that's another thing. We're gonna we'll put that at the top. Uh, add a toggle for uh, C or F units. P five JS animation. Yeah, make it responsive for sure. Okay, um, so for those of you that are like new to coding, this is called uh, scope creep. Like when, when I set out, I was just gonna build a basic app that shows you the weather where you are. But as you can see, like there's endless possibilities. We can keep making it better, we can add more features, and this is just a simple weather app. So yeah, um, I think tomorrow we're gonna work on uh, entropy chat. I think that's the plan. Tomorrow is entropy chat. Cool, all right, I'm gonna push this code to GitHub. Um, we'll also deploy it. And I think to deploy it, I'm just going to use search. C or wrong. Hey. <laughs> Allow crypto trading based on the current weather. <laughs> uh, the plan is, well, actually, here's the thing. The live coders conference is tomorrow. So I thought about not streaming so that we could, we could direct people over to the live coders conference. But I also could stream because that's normally when I stream. I don't know. Is this doable in Python? Uh, the tricky thing about Python is it's it's not supported by the web browser. I mean, there's probably a way to do it. I think there's like web interpreters for Python, but uh, the code that I'm writing here is running directly inside of the web browser. So HTML, JavaScript, CSS, all of this is supported by Chrome, um, Firefox, Safari. It can just run this code. When you start to write Python, um, it gets a little more complicated. You, you technically could build a server-side rendered or a backend app with Python that, that basically generates HTML, and then um, the browser can make a request there and, and load that HTML. 
Or you could implement a backend API with, Py with Python that calls these weather APIs and responds to a front end app like this. Um, but just like this, the, simple, the short answer is no, but it's definitely possible to get Python in the mix somewhere. Yeah. I don't know, Sledge Dog. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, no, I could bring, wait, wait, what are you saying? Stream and then raid. The thing is, it's probably going to be like, I'm going to be streaming most likely for as long as the live coders conference is. Yeah. Netscape. <laughs> Swap to the XML version. <laughs> um, I've been coding for like over, over 15 years. Um, I got a degree in computer science. I was m like sort of self-taught in web coding before I got my computer science degree. Um, and then I did like desktop coding. Now I, I mainly do full stack, which is like front end apps, back end apps, all that good stuff. There's probably a way to run Python in the browser using WebAssembly. Yeah, that'd be, it's, it's another way, but basically um, it's, you can't just do it directly in Python. There's gonna be some extra steps. I'll say that. <laughs> I'm gonna stream all day. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, so I, I'm self-taught and also I went to school for computer science. Yeah, there's a lot of people here. Okay, I need to put this on GitHub. So GitHub's really cool. It's a place where we can share code with, with people. Um, if you go to github.com slash coding garden, there are, let me see. Yeah, there are 116 repositories. So I, I've been running this, uh, this channel, uh, this stream for like two and a half years now. And every single bit of code we've ever written on stream is open source here on GitHub. Um, so you can see all the repos for other apps that we've built. Um, but yeah, and that's, that's the, the one that people want me to work on because we started building it. Um, I'll probably just work on that. The thing is, when you're working on an app that people don't have context for, like all, all the new Boga friends that are here watching, if we start working on this, there's there's a lot of prior knowledge that you need to know. <laughs> right, Doc has figured it out. <laughs> um, there's a lot of like uh, like context switching, and then there's things that that they haven't seen before that I would need to explain. So it makes it really hard to work on apps like that. Boga, hey. Um, and that's why it's it's a little bit more fun to just like build new things. I don't know. I I, was, I streamed on YouTube, so I only started streaming on Twitch about six months ago. Before that, um, I, I was streaming on YouTube. But you can see my, my live stream archive on YouTube. Um, repository name. Boga, hey. <laughs> Simple weather app. So I'm going to do this, this. I didn't see the GitHub uh, redesign, but uh, I'm also going to put in the code that we got from Doc, because maybe maybe we can use this. Maybe from Doc. I have zero prior knowledge on web dev, but I still learn stuff here. Well, that's good. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. At least it's somewhat useful. And thank you for that stretch. Oh, there we go. So that's what I was mentioning. There, there, there are some things that basically like will interpret your Python and and, allow, and basically convert it to JavaScript so that it can run in the browser. In the browser, Python seems to be one of those things. Um. All right. I've got this. I need to make a Git repo. Um, initial commit. Do that. You have to say that they should watch your old. You don't have to watch my older videos. <laughs> no. Um, I'm I'm just happy that you're here right now. I appreciate you all. All right. Uh, I think this is here. Um, <laughs> there's the next steps. But there you go. If you all want to take a look at this code, click that link. You can take a look at the code. And what I'm gonna do now. Um, is put it on the internet. And for that, I'm actually going to use this tool called Surge. Um, so Surge is a static is static web publishing for front-end developers. So the thing about the website that I just built is it's all static it's all static files, right? I, d I don't actually have my own backend. These are just files that run directly inside of, of the web browser. I'm calling this uh, MetaWeather API, and, and that's some backend. They, they do bunch of, a bunch of bunch of stuff behind the scenes but um 
we don't really have to worry about that. We just make the request and then we get it back in the browser. So this website, Surge, allows you to deploy static websites like that. Uh, and to do that, um, you can just type Surge. And I think I think we can do a custom sub subdomain. Netlify, Versal. Yeah, here's the thing. <laughs> People have a lot of opinions about this. Um, but this is going to be easy. And it'll actually be much easier than Versal, especially if you're new to deploying. Um, domain. Weather.coding.gr. I could do that too. Let me see really quick. Um, surge project domain. Okay. Actually, let's do this. Surge. Um, simple weather app. Let's see what happens. No such file or directory. I don't know. We'll just type surge. The only issue is, is we're going to get a totally random URL. Uh, yeah, that's the project. Oh, there we go. Instead of accurate club .surge .sh, .sh, we'll say um, simple weather app. I, okay, that, that already exists. So we have to pick a new one. Um, let's call it uh, silly squirrel. That's a wait, what? All right, give me a second. Uh, we're going to go to my Pixel home while I figure out these permission issues. <laughs> Got to go to see, see you later, InfoMath. Surge dot slash domain. Um, actually, I need to reinstall Surge, I think. It's broken. Accessing non-existent property pad levels. What? Gray cabbage. Yeah, so uh, the um, that's why it wouldn't let me domain uh, deploy there. Um, the thing is, I'm trying even a random domain, and it's saying that I don't have permission. So, search is canceled. <laughs> Actually, could I? Let me see this. I know that Netlify. There's like Netlify drop. That'd probably be even an even easier way to do this. Um, I think. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> this is really cool. <laughs> we can literally, I can literally drag and drop my uh, my files, and it'll deploy it. Um, so, player name. Thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. I did a thing. Open tester dot surge. Uh, with Netlify, you just select a Git repo. But there's no build task. Is it going to know what to do? It's too complicated. <laughs> it's all too complicated. <laughs> I just want to deploy these files here like this. So here we go. I'm going to try drag and dropping. Yeah, I've uh, I've seen... Uh, so I, I run the Denver Vue.js meetup, and Sarah Drasner has given a talk there before. Make sure you drop in a folder with index.html. Well, uh, how about this? Coding garden. Um, simple weather app. Here we go. Uploading. Looks like something went wrong. Why is it so hard to deploy? <laughs> Why? I dropped I dropped the folder. I tried. Look. Refresh. My PC is broke. It should be easy. Right? Well. Oh, rel no opener for sure. Log in. I should be able to do it without login. Sign up, connect your GitHub. <laughs> All right. We're just going to use Versal. <laughs> Call Microsoft support. Uh, do I need to zip it up? Oh, is that the case? No, it just says drag, drag the file, uh, the folder. doesn't matter. Um, we are going to um, do this on Versal. Simple weather app pie. <laughs> okay, Versal actually wasn't that hard. 
<laughs> but there you go. Go to that website, put in your location, and you should be able to see uh, the weather. The weather there. Denver. Get weather. Get weather. I could have used GitHub pages, yeah? Yeah, so first of all is a... Um, um, a way of deploying websites. Uh, they mainly do like serverless. Um, let me go on a tab where I'm not logged in. That was easy. Yeah, it was. Um, but they used to be called now. Um, but it's basically s single command serverless deployments. And they also do like CDNs and static websites too. It does look like it's broken. Why is it broken? Loading mixed act. Oh. I didn't do HTTPS on my on my course. Let me fix that. I should be able to do this. <laughs> Here we go. I'll fix it. Wait, and yeah, is the GIF HTTPS too? Yeah, everything else is HTTPS. Cool. Literally a one letter fix, yes. Hard refresh. Hard refresh. Did I save it? I realize it's broken. I know. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm getting the old cached version. Oh, you know what? Um, I didn't do now dash dash prod. Here we go. I should get sponsored by these Versal guys. I typically don't do sponsorships, um, but I do use them a lot. Hey, <laughs> well, it doesn't look good on a small screen, but there's that. <laughs> uh, all, right. all right, it should work now. Yeah, it should work. And all right, I'll push it to GitHub too. Okay, uh, the course trick. Uh, I, I actually have to go. I explained it a little bit uh, at the beginning of the stream. So if you look at the VOD, you can see that. But the main issue is this this server MetaWeather? If you look at the network tab, whenever you make a request, they are not setting the access control allow origin header. So if you look in the network tools, you can see all of the the headers that come back from the response. And for the browser to allow a request to a different domain, because right now the domain that we're on is Simple Weather App, Pi. <laughs> Um, because we're on this origin, this different domain, it's not allowed to make the request to this domain, MetaWeather, because their server has not allowed it. Um, and by passing it through, you just got Rickrolled. Nice. <laughs> by passing it through the, um, the course proxy, that server puts that header on it and then forwards the request. It's kind of like a man in the middle. Um, so that way it actually works. That's the short version. There's a much longer version. Um, all right, so we built this app, and it looks okay. It's not horrible. It's it's not horrible. Trademark, not horrible. Um, and this is what we did. We have a basic HTML page. Much love, yeah. So basic HTML page. We have the form where the user can enter in their location. We have a nice little image that shows whenever we're loading. We have a place to put all the errors. We have a place to put all the results. Um, we then have some styles. So the styles set the, uh, <laughs> the font name. Um, they set the margin. Um, they set the style of the button, what should happen, um, or how things should look. Uh, basically, we set up a bunch of styles, and those styles are linked here. And then lastly, we set up the JavaScript. So uh, the JavaScript uh, made it interactive. So um, we basically listened for when the form was submitted. We got what the user entered into the input. Uh, we used and displayed an error if there was an error. Um, we showed the loading image if we were loading or not loading, and then we put the results into the page. So these are all of our places on the page that we can use in JavaScript. When the page loads, hide that loading image. Um, when the form is submitted, if they didn't enter in a location, show an error message. If they did enter a location, hide the error message and then get the weather for the location that they entered. Um, and then when we get the weather, that calls two API endpoints. The first endpoint uh, tries to look up the location ID of whatever they entered in. If it couldn't find that, it says location not found. If it did find it, we then hit another endpoint, which gives us back the weekly forecast for that location. Um, and um, once we have that back, we get back this list of each day. So what's the current day's weather, tomorrow, the day after that? 
And so basically we look at each one of those things and we create a nice little card that has the date, the image, and the average min and max temperatures. And then we add that to the page. And that's pretty much it. That's web development. This is what people do for a living. <laughs> there we go. We did it. Yeah, Simple Weather App is a definitely a competitive market. <laughs> Awesome. So uh, for those of you that missed it, this is the link if you want to try it out in your browser. Um, if everything works, how can we test the error? Uh, you, if you just put in junk right here, if you do that, um, location not found, you can at least see that. Um, yeah, I'm done streaming. Yeah, I got to go. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much, Callum, Callum Chaney, for that, uh, that sub. Beautiful. Um, and then the code is here. So if you're interested in looking at the code... Go to that repo. We are going to raid someone. Um, so the, the, the link's in the chat, but this site gives you the sub raid message if you're a sub. Where's that? Um, but if you're not a sub, uh, the equally good emoji-based raid message. <laughs> uh, we might, Andrew. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you know. Um, I'm going to find somebody to raid, and then we'll go there. That is simple, but the test of the, f uh, of the, the failed request. You're right. Um, I, this is this scenario right here where the actual data itself is not found, um, is probably only going to happen if we put in the wrong ID, but then again, we're looking at this. So it's possible that this will actually never fail, but it could also fail because the, the API request doesn't work. I don't know. I gotta go. Those are your raid message. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much to Kit Boga for that raid. Thank you to all the Boga friends for sticking around. This was super fun. Um, and thanks again to all the new subs, Twitch Prime subs, regular subs, all the bits, all the gifted subs. Um, I appreciate you. Thanks, St. Plays, for the raid. Thank you, Madhouse D, for that raid. Boga, hey. Boga, bye. <laughs> and yeah, stick around. We're gonna raid somebody. And uh, I will be streaming tomorrow. I don't know what time. But if you follow me on Twitter, if you follow me on here, if you join the Discord, you'll get a message that I'm live. But I will be streaming live at some point tomorrow. Thank each follower one by one. We literally got like three or 400 followers um, in the morning, my time. So most likely around 10 a.m. GMT minus six. But it might be a little bit earlier than that. But I'll let you know. Uh, again, thank you all for being here. I appreciate you. If you followed, you will actually see your name on this last screen. And... There's a lot of you. <laughs> this is going to be a long credits roll, but thank you so much for that. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. Mm -hmm.